Okay, then everybody, it is two o'clock. Good afternoon and welcome to this cabinet meeting on the 29th of May 2024. Third agenda item like is the appointment of chair. I am Councillor Stephen, leader of Meath Potaba Council, and I will be chairing today's meeting of cabinet. In light of two uh, chairs' announcements, can I welcome any members of the public or press view in this meeting? Can I please ask you to ensure that your microphones are switched to off? You are here to observe the meeting only. Can I uh, ask members and officers, please ensure that your phones are switched to silent for the duration of the meeting and that your microphones are switched to mute unless you are speaking. In addition, when asked to raise your hand, if members who are virtually attending this meeting could raise their electronic hands, and for members physically present, can you please raise your hands here in the chamber. General item three are declarations of interest. Can I ask members, are there any declarations of interest? And please, would, you, would members say what the items are and what the interest is? And then I'll ask Tommy to forward an electronic version of the form for you to complete an email back to her. So are there any declarations of interest from members? I don't see any. Thank you. Agenda item four are the minutes from the previous meeting of Cabinet held on the 8th of May 2024. I refer you to pages five to eight of your agenda pack. The minutes are here for approval of accuracy. Can I ask if members have any comments on the minutes, please? I don't see any. So I will now propose that they are through accurate record. Could I have a second there to confirm the minutes, please? A second. Thank you, Sean. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I'll assume that you are content with the accuracy of those minutes. Uh, I see no indications to the country leader, so those minutes have been approved. Thank you, Tammy. Agenda item five are the minutes of the previous meetings of the Environment, Regeneration and Street Scene Service, Services Cabinet Board, Education, Skills and Wellbeing Cabinet Board, Social Services, Houses and Housing and Community Safety Cabinet Board, and Cabinet Policy and Resources Subcommittee. I refer you to page, pages 9 to 24 of your agenda pack. The minutes are here for approval of accuracy. Members, once more, are there any comments on the accuracy of these minutes? I don't see any. I would now propose that they are a true record. Could sorry, I have? Sorry, if we could go through them one by one, just to take into account they were separate meetings. So okay, yeah, that's okay. fine. OK, then. So the Environment, Regeneration and Street Scene Services Cabinet Board meeting. Can I have any members, any comments on that, those minutes? I don't see any. So I will now be happy to pause the true record. Can I have a second that to those minutes, please? Happy to second, Leader. Okay, I've been, I've been informed that members need to propose them and second them. So can I have a proposal that the true record from Carbon? Greg? If I can move now, Leader, just to confirm, um, obviously because um, there will be individual cabinet members at each of those meetings, can I just ask that when the Leader goes through each of the um, minutes that the cabinet members were present, propose and second them, that way then we've got an accurate representation that they were actually what was discussed then at the meeting. Yeah, that's clear, Craig, thank you for that. So back to the Environment, Regeneration, Street Seed Service, Cabinet Board minutes. They have a proposal of the cabinet members for that. Meet then on a second from that meeting, please. Yeah, happy to propose, leader. Thank you, Scott. Second there, Jeremy. Happy to sec. Happy to second, leader. Thank you, thank you, Jeremy. Okay, those uh, are fine. So if I go to education, skills, and well-being cabinet board, again, can I propose the true record and the second, please? Yeah, happy to propose. Yeah, happy to propose. Cabinet member Jeremy. Happy to second, leader. Lovely, thank you. And then social services, housing and community safety cabinet board. Happy to propose, Sean. Thank you, Sean. 
Our second chair. Thank you, Joe. And then Cabinet Policy and Resources Subcommittee. I'm happy to approve, to approve those, Chair. And then, am I happy to second? Is that okay, Craig? Yeah, I'm happy to second those. Okay, I now refer you to pages 9 to 24 of your agenda pack. The minutes are here for approval of accuracy. So we've just approved them of accuracy. Uh, but do you have any comments? Please, this is the same thing I've already done. So we're going to do it this way as well, I think. Yeah. Okay. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I would assume that you're all content with the accuracy of those uh, minutes as well. Certainly, I have no indications to the country chair, so all of those minutes have been approved. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Agenda item six is public question time. I have received no notification from the public to speak at today's meeting. Agenda item seven is the estab establishment of a joint committee with Pembroke County Council in respect of Celtic Freeports. Uh, the report is on pages 25 to 76 and is here for a decision. I'm going to call Craig Griffiths in, Head of Legal Services, now to add anything further. Craig, please. Thank you, Leader. So just to give members an overview of this particular report, it's the next stage of the process in respect of the establishment of the governance regime. It's the Celtic Freeport programme that we are currently in the middle of preparing. So as you'll be aware, key principle of the Freeport programme is that decisions will be made via a process and structure that preserves both the public-private do a key approach, ensuring democratic accountability for the expenditure of public funds. So investments will be identified by an external call for proposals and will be considered then by the Celtic Freeport Company by an investment board they will be establishing. And then the ones then which they wish to recommend for consideration will be passed then to the joint committee, which we are going to be establishing jointly with Pembrokeshire Council um, to be able to make a determination whether to, to give the funding in that sense. One of the key aspects that you should be aware of in respect of the role of the Joint Committee is if it is a proposal that the Celtic Freeport Board do not wish ultimately to proceed with, then that information will also be relayed to the Joint Committee and you'll have the opportunity to ask questions or to ask them to go back and reconsider those matters to make sure you can understand why those decisions are, haven't been supported and also then for you to make sure from a political oversight that um, you get an adequate information and they can go back to reconsider some of those areas. So a joint committee will be established between the Council and Pembrokeshire Council, uh, where three cabinet members will be appointed from each authority to make the decision making in respect of the, the functions that the joint committee will have. The terms of reference for that joint committee are established in the free port agreement, which we've included in your pack today, which is effectively the legal agreement, which will help create the joint committee entity to enable those decisions that are ultimately to be made. The document itself is standard collaboration agreements, but it's the terms of reference specifically at Appendix 1 that will set out what the role of the joint committee will actually be. There will be a corresponding overview and scrutiny committee that will also be developed as well, but that the determination of the establishment of that is a full council decision, and so a report will be brought to full council in the coming weeks to establish that joint scrutiny committee and to agree the members then who will be appointed to it. So the report itself before you will hopefully give that level of overview as to what the terms of reference will be. If I can just make one slight amendment leader to the report, and that's the implementation of the decision. It was initially done as immediate implementation with the consent of the chair of the scrutiny committee. That will no longer be relevant now because we're not in any sort of time constraints. So it will be subject to the usual three-day calling process. Thank you, Craig. Members, have any questions for Craig? I don't see any. One quick question from me, Craig. Um, we'll all be aware there's a new leader down at Pembroke. Is there anything else that we should proper potentially be made aware of in this process uh, because of that change in leadership at, at that council? Thank you. We've been in discussions with colleagues in Pembrokeshire Council with regards to a revised draft. Pembrokeshire, when they considered the documentation a few weeks ago, asked for some additional amendments. I've now had contact with my equivalent monitoring officer in Pembrokeshire and they're supportive of the current draft now ultimately before members. So there's nothing else additional at this stage for consideration we done. Thank you, Craig. That's very reassuring. And now we refer members to the recommendations on page 33 of the agenda pack. 
and the associated appendices, which include the IIA. I'm happy to propose uh, this agenda right then. Could I have a second, then, please? I have a second, Chair. Thank you, Sean. Uh, any abstentions from members? I don't see any. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you're in favour of the recommendations. No indications to the country, Chair, so those recommendations have been approved. Thank you, Tommy. Agenda item eight uh, is the appointment of a senior coroner for Swansea and Edinburgh Talbot. The report is on pages 77 to 86 and is here for a decision. Um, and I'm ask Craig if there's anything further to add at this stage, please. Thank you, Leader. So just to explain the nature of this report, um, the Council has statutory duties in relation to our coroner service and the current interim senior coroner, Mr. Colin Phillips, was appointed on the 31st of May 2014 when the previous coroner resigned. There is normally a duty to appoint a senior coroner within three months, but due to further potential mergers of the colonial areas, the chief coroner indicated that he wished to meet with representatives of ourselves and Swansea Council to discuss options going forward. However, the Chief Coroner's Office have now confirmed that um, he no longer wishes to propose any mergers for the Swansea and Talbot area, and it happy that it remains standalone. So the councils are now able to proceed with the appointment of a senior coroner. The post will be advertised widely in accordance with the guidance that we have to follow. So the report today is asking for approval to commence that and to grant the delegated authority to myself in consultation with the Camera Member for Finance, Performance and Social Justice to agree the final terms and then make the arrangements to seek to be advertised the post of um, the senior, senior partner. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much, Craig. Members, do I have any questions on this agenda item? On CNE, I know these are members of the recommendations on page 79 of the agenda pack on the IIA. I'm happy to propose this agenda item. Could I have a second, please? Second, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Any abstentions from members? On CNE. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you're in favour of the recommendations. No indications to the contrary, leader, so that uh, recommendation has been approved. Oh, thank, thank you, uh, Tommy. Agenda item nine is the Hackney Carriage Taxi Fare Increase. This report is on pages 87 to 98 and is here for a decision. I will ask Craig once more if he has anything further to add for this agenda item. Thank you, Leader. So just to explain a little bit of narrative behind this report, taxi licensing is generally a non-executive function and the responsibility usually vests in the Registration and Licensing Committee. However, there are two areas where the Council's Cabinet has that decision-making power. That's to determine, first of all, how many carriage stands and then determining the maximum fare for which how many carriage may change, which may charge. Several requests have been received from Hackney Carriage Trade for an increase to the existing maximum fare um, for which a Hackney Carriage may charge. An information report was taken to the Registration and Licensing Committee on the 15th of April. Members are asked for any comments on the proposal and they will ultimately support it at that same time. So the report before you today is to settle what the details of that revised charge would be. And if approved today, we will embark on a public notice. We will be deferring that now until after the pre-election period um, is, is concluded. And at that point, then, if there are no objections, it will be implemented. If there are objections, it will be brought back to you for further consideration before making a determination. So um, that pretty much sums up the report. Leader. Thank you once more, Craig. <coughs> members, do you have any questions? On CNE, I now refer members to the recommendation on page 89 of the agenda pack and the associated appendices, which includes the IIA. I'm happy once more to propose this agenda item. Can I have a second then, please? Happy to second, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Any abstentions? I don't see any. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I would assume that you're in favour of the recommendations. No indications to the contrary, Chair, so those recommendations have been approved. Thank you, Tommy. Agenda item 10. I have one urgent item this afternoon, and it's the replacement community service transport vehicle, which will be discussed in private session. Agenda item 11 is access to meetings. So the access to meetings report is on pages 99 to 104 of your report box. So I need to resolve to exclude the public from the following items in pursuit to regulation four in brackets three and five of the statutory instrument 2001, numbers 2290 and paragraph 14 of part four 
of Schedule 12A to the Local Government Act 1972. I'm happy to propose we now move into private session. Could I have a second there, please? Happy to second, Chair. Thank you, Sharon. Can I see if members have any abstentions to this proposal? I don't see any. Members, if you do not indicate to the contrary by raising your hand, I will assume that you're in favour of moving into private session. I see no uh, no indications to the contrary, Chair. So I can confirm we're just about to move into private session now. I'll just 